In this lecture, I'm going to talk about the age of the universe and how we know what the age of the universe is. You might think at first that the best way to do this would just be find the most distant galaxies, and however far that is away in light years, well, that's about how old the universe is. Well, that gives you a pretty good estimate. I mean, there's galaxies that we've measured that are like 12 billion light years away, and so we know that the universe must be at least 12 billion years old. But there's a better way and a more accurate way to do this, and it's actually based on the Hubble law. Hubble's law gives us a way to know the age of the universe. And this is why it's so important to understand Hubble's law and get a good value of that Hubble constant h naught, because this is how we're going to get the age of the universe. If you think about what Hubble is saying, that the galaxies are all moving away from each other because the universe is expanding, if you imagine sort of running the movie backwards, like rewind the movie, um, in the past, the galaxies were closer together. And as you go further and further into the past, they were closer and closer and closer. And at some point, they were right next to each other. There was zero distance between them. Well, that we're going to find out is basically the beginning of the universe. And the amount of time that it has taken for them to reach their current distance apart from each other is the age of the universe. Since the beginning of the universe, when they were right next to each other, until now, they have expanded and now they are at whatever distance they are apart today. Well, we know that speed is equal to distance over time. That's, you know, first day of physics class. We also know from Hubble's law that V is equal to H naught times D, H naught being the Hubble constant. Well, let's just look at the two right parts of this. If I have D over T equals H naught times D, the D's cancel, leaving me with 1 over T is equal to H naught, or T is equal to 1 over H naught. What are the distances and times here? Well, the distance is how far apart are the galaxies today? And the time is how long did it take them to get there? Well, that's the age of the universe. So the age of the universe is 1 divided by the Hubble constant. Well, you think, OK, the Hubble constant is like 68, so the age of the universe is 1 over 68. That doesn't make a lot of sense to me. I know it's billions of years. Well, um, in fact, the problem is you have to do a big, hideous conversion. And so what I'm going to do in the rest of this lecture is give you an example of how do you do the big, hideous conversion. So here we go. This is number four in your packet. So let's just take a sort of general value of h naught of 70. We're going to find the age of the universe. Well, we know we're going to have to do 1 over h naught eventually. But it would be best if we got rid of all of this kilometers and megaparsecs and all of that business and just have something that involves seconds because I know seconds is a time. Now kilometers and megaparsecs are both units of distance. So if I have a distance divided by a distance, the distances are going to cancel out. So I'm going to be able to find the age of the universe from this. What we have to do is a huge conversion. So I'm starting with 70 kilometers per second per megaparsec. The seconds and the megaparsecs both go on the bottom. Now, I want to get the kilometers and the megaparsecs down to meters. I just want meters on the top and meters on the bottom because then they'll cancel. So let's start with the kilometers. There's a thousand meters in one kilometer. So at this point, my kilometers are going to go away. And I now have meters and megaparsecs. Well, let's get rid of the megaparsecs. The first thing I know is that mega stands for 10 to the 6th. So 1 megaparsec is 10 to the 6th parsecs. So megaparsecs are gone, and I have seconds, meters, and parsecs. Okay, I don't really like parsecs, but I know that one parsec is 3.26 light years. So parsecs are gone, 
and now I've got meters, seconds, and light years. Okay, well, light years. One light year is 9.5 times 10 to the 15 meters. So light years are gone. But oh, look, I've got meters here and here. And so those cancel now too. And all I'm left with is seconds. So what we need to do is plug this into the calculator. And what I will be left with is something over seconds. So what I get is that H naught is equal to 2.26 times 10 to the negative 18 per second, inverse seconds. The seconds is in the denominator. The age of the universe is 1 over h naught. So I can do 1 divided by 2.26 times 10 to the negative 18. And I have 4.4 times 10 to the 17 seconds. That is the age of the universe, 4.4 times 10 to the 17 seconds. Now, I don't really have a good sense of how long that is. I would kind of like to get this in something a little bit more familiar, like years. So let's do another conversion. Let's just get this into years. 4.4 times 10 to the 17 seconds. There's 60 seconds in a minute. There's 60 minutes in an hour. No, 24 hours in a day and 365 days in a year. And what I get is 1.4 times 10 to the 10 years. That's 14 billion years, which is a very typical number for the age of the universe. Very standard kind of number. So from this, we know that the universe must be billions of years old. Now, if you're looking at this and saying, that was really hard to convert all of that stuff, I'm never going to remember this. The good news is that every single problem like this that I could give you is exactly the same. You're going to do this exact same set of conversions. There is no difference in any of the problems except for what this number is at the beginning. And then, of course, what you get for your answer. But all of the work you do is exactly the same for every single problem about the age of the universe. There's nothing I can do differently. So that's how we know the age of the universe.